film won Best Comedy in Toronto. It's called Do It Yourself. Please put your hands together right now for Tom Cutie. <laughs> Some of you kept it going. The rest of you were like, Fuck, again? I got How many times do I gotta keep it going? I, mean, I, you know, I was just talking about this and some of the guys, and uh, I just heard that tomorrow's daylight savings time. Did you guys know this? I, I had no idea. They, oh, is it Sunday? Okay, okay. See, they don't tell you. They, they have no idea. They keep it from you, and then they spring it on you. They, they, they don't say, oh, it's time to change the clocks. You gotta go home. Change the clocks. Don't forget to change the clocks. You're like, oh, wait, wait, uh, now? I gotta do it now? No, at midnight. Oh, at midnight. Okay. You know, like, uh, a lot of people hate it, you know? And I understand that. Um, a lot of people want to get rid of it. Uh, but I like it. I think it's kind of fun. I think it's kind of exciting. I mean, Jesus, I just changed my whole night. I mean, my whole weekend's changed. I mean, like, it's like, what do we do? Do we turn it back? Do we turn it forward? Is it a leap year? I don't know. I don't know. It's like, you know, and then for like months, we just wander around the house. Oh, honey, every clock is wrong. Honey, is this the right time? Is this the right time? Is it, because I, I gotta go, what, is that right? We don't know. Nobody knows. The only clock in our house that's right is the microwave. And it's always hot pocket time. And forget, forget trying to change the clock in your car, right? Forget about it. I mean, Jesus, you, you're trying to push buttons, everything. You finally got to get out the manual, right? And you got to, the other time, like the, it was six months ago, I've been reading the manual for like 20 minutes until I realize I'm reading German. <laughs> Then you gotta call like customer service. Forget about it. You know they're like, well, you, know, you gotta get the serial numbers. I'm looking around there. Finally, finally I'm like, fuck it. You know, I just I'll, I'll, I'll wait for six months. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna take six months to figure it out. So uh, yeah, that happened. It had a big week. It had a big week. I hope you guys uh, had a good week. Everyone's deflating. But uh, we had a big anniversary. We just had our 25th wedding anniversary. I know. I know. It's great. It's great. Four different wives. <laughs> No, just the one, just, just the one, just the one. Um, and she's great. I, I, I love her. I, 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 and I'm trying to live it up because when she finds out there's no trust fund, it's all over. No, I'm serious. She's gonna be pissed. She's really gonna be pissed. When she finds out that my entire estate consists of like uh, 20 Hawaiian short, sh uh, 20 Hawaiian shirts and a skateboard. Uh, that's not going to go over too well, seriously. I don't think that that really constitutes an estate, though. <laughs> oh, seriously, seriously. You know, there's one thing to, like, be married to a jackass. It's another whole thing to be married to a jackass with no financial security. <laughs> Really, it just puts a whole new paint job on things. But I love my wife, you know, uh, at 25 years, it's hard to believe, but uh, yeah, that's where we're at. And I think, I think that what amazes me is the, the past couple of years that we've lived through. I mean, it, they said that we were either gonna have a ton of divorce in this country or a, a, like a ton of babies. And that totally made sense because we were either fighting all the time or we were having sex. It was like one or the other, right? <laughs> And things got really kind of interesting when um, we like combined the two. <laughs> and uh, that's when uh, things got kind of freaky. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, but I think it was harder for single people. I really do, especially with my buddy, my buddy Mitch. I mean, Mitch, he, he's got needs. He's got needs, man. And, uh, you know, and I, I was like, you know, they, they came out with guidelines. They were like, look, really, we don't think that you should be dating at all. But if you're going to date, have like a six-foot buffer between you and your date, you know? And, okay. And I was talking to Mitch, and Mitch was like, screw that. And I was like, man, it, it must have been terribly awkward. It's like, oh, you look really nice. I really like your hair. What? I said, I like your hair. Oh, no, I'm not wearing any underwear. And then the CDC, the CDC came 
now they're like going, uh, you know, we don't think you should date, right? For one thing. And, uh, uh, but if you're gonna date, try not to have too much physical contact with your date, you know? Try not to, try not to touch too much. Just try not to, uh, don't, don't, don't have too much contact. Just the tip. Just, just the tip. Just, just. This is very, very awkward. I remember it was very strange though, for like that first month, my wife and I, you know, uh, we were like totally at each other's throats, you know. We were like, uh, I knew that she was just looking at me going, do I have to spend the rest of my life with this guy? Jesus Christ. You know, and I knew I was getting on her nerves when she was like wandering around the apartment with a steak knife. <laughs> then I knew that that was a good time for me to take the dog for a walk. <laughs> And she would get on my nerves too, you know, the same thing, you know. She's always taking, telling me to take out the trash. Can you take out the trash? You're not busy, you're not doing anything. Can you take out the trash? It's like, you know, oh, oh honey, can you take out the trash? Finally, I just picked her up and I carried her off to the curb. I get it. She was not amused. No, no. Yeah, it was weird though. We didn't see anyone for like a month, right? And then, uh, uh, <laughs> we're sitting there on the couch watching Judge uh, Judy, and uh, there was a knock at the door, and we're like, who the hell is that? <laughs> and I go out to the window, and I look out, and there's my mom. She's standing there, like, with a suitcase. And I'm like, I go to the door, I'm like, Mom, what's going on? Is everything okay? She goes, well, Tommy, I just thought that if we have to quarantine, we should probably do it as a family. <laughs> uh, so that happened, and then but I love my mom. You know, she's a free spirit. She, she she cannot be contained. You know, she's like, and as soon as she walks in the door, it's like no drinking, no smoking, no doing drugs, no nudity in the house. I mean, she wasn't following any of our rules. <laughs> But I was gonna, I was gonna say, is there anybody from the DEA here tonight? Anybody? All right, good. Yeah, yeah. My mom's a drug dealer. She, uh, she, she. We used to have this house in San Francisco, and she was, she used to deal pot. We had this gate, and all the hippies would line up on the gate, right? And they would give a password, and they'd slip in the gate, and they, they'd get their weed. And back then, there were lids of grass. Does anybody know what a lid of grass is? Yeah, in our house, it was two handfuls. That was a, that was a lid. Anyway, they get their grass, they'd pop out the side gate. It was a pretty good system. Uh, and then um, one weekend, my mom ran out of baggies, and her friend Nancy comes over with a case of surgical gloves, right? And they took the weed, and they stuck them in the surgical gloves, and they sold those. And it was known as the five-finger lid. It was very famous throughout the Bay Area. Give me five, high five. That's where that shit came from. In fact, I was in password at the gate. Give me five, high five. My mom is a trip, man. Uh, legendary, legendary. And then so she ran out of the, the surgical gloves and then Nancy comes over with a case of condoms. And they took the grass and they stuffed them in the condoms, right? And they sold those. And that was known as the five inch dick lid. And then I, 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 you know, I don't know, it didn't, over, it didn't really go over as well. And I never, uh, I never understood that uh, because uh, well, I mean, uh, you can smoke the bejesus out of yourself, and then you can practice safe sex. It was a win-win, really. But nobody was practicing safe sex back then, right? I mean, safe sex was like not having sex in a moving vehicle. That, that would be safe sex. Right? Or safer sex. That would be safer sex. Hey, you guys, thanks a lot for coming out and supporting comedy. I'm Tom Curry. We'll see you next time.